that some people believe to be the case. I don't know that. I'm never really done with valuation myself. I'm not sure that people, what people say is correct. Some people think that you can't beat C. I doubt that. I don't know what it is. This calculation I can do. And it just tells you that the number stage only depends, only is found by looking at indoor Python and outdoor Python. But this means that if you look at Python very close to the horizon of my call, let's take a blanket of particles which are moving around the black hole very close to the horizon. That blanket of particles doesn't enter this argument. So that, that blanket is included in the argument. So if you count states, you also are counting particles which are near the black hole horizon. Why is that so important? Well, very near the horizon, you will find that the particles are slowing down. And actually, the density state here increases. So there's, these are particles moving in and particles moving out. But they move in eternally and they move out eternally. So actually, when you compute that, you find there's an infinity of particles forming a blanket around the black hole. That infinity of particles represent the infinity of states. Those states are included in this argument. People often don't realize this. When I talk to colleagues, they say, well, those particles you haven't, you know, they don't enter into the thermodynamic argument. You should also add those particles here, but they are already entered in the argument. So this is rather simple reasoning tells you that this result comes out after you've already taken into account whatever happens very near the horizon of the black hole. What happens near the horizon of the black hole diverges. And this is a divergence that's very important, telling you that there's still something I don't understand. I do not know how to derive this result from straightforward physics. I do know how to derive it from Hawking's argument, but that's an indirect argument. Directly, in the type of physics here, I find that the entity of black holes is infinite, because I find infinite number of particles. Why? Well, if you use the most ideal coordinate system, which has inborn particles and outgoing particles, you find you have to take the log of i minus 2gm as a parameter sigma, which is a more natural parameter. There's a lot of things <coughs> go in indefinitely. In, in this log of everything goes to minus infinity at the horizon. Which means the particles have an interesting way to go. They never really reach the horizon. They go there forever. But then that may way they represent the infinity of quantum states. Space and time are basically not compact in the horizon. And that means infinite states. So still there's something <coughs> dead wrong with the whole argument. And this is why I think the whole idea is so important. And that's because it suggests that there's something dead wrong about it. So let me. Now, then, uh, show to you how you should, in principle, be able to do this better. I will begin the argument, but I, I realize that uh, I will not have enough time to complete it, so I will, I will continue with this important ingredient of my considerations tomorrow. But I will start the argument right now and just stop mm -hmm. the time zone. Uh, is there a. Oh, yes. So, the question is not a fundamental one. And this is why I think there are some form of paradox in this whole situation. Today, I won't get to on that. I use, okay, I can do the calculation here, but let's try not to, to mention too many details about it. If I use sigma as the log of i minus 2m, then very near the horizon of the black hole where i is equal to 2m, this is a more convenient coordinate to use, because then you find that inborn particles have sigma equals plus or minus t plus a constant. Uh, sigma is going to minus t if the particle moves into a black hole. Sigma is plus t, 
IT is, is the, the short shield time parameter led by the guard from that call. So, uh, and it really means that R is 2GM plus e to the power plus or minus t of constant. So this means that inverted particles, and that's a more precise statement than I had earlier this morning, the inverted particles reach the, the horizon only asymptotically. They approach exponentially, but they never cross the horizon. So you can say particles never go into the black hole, you have a hole alone. Well, yes, but for all practical purposes when T grows very quickly, so um, very soon this exponent is so small that practically speaking, the particle is at the horizon at T equals infinity. If it moves in, but then it moves out, then you have a plus T here, and then the particle moves out exponentially. So the outline particles are the Hoffman particles, the inner particle is the very flow into the black hole. But this sigma coordinate is unbounded. It goes from minus infinity, basic to zero, and then plus infinity. Well, to a very large values of R, we want to make the transition from the law to R itself. So, so this often is a parameter that people use that they are log and they have all the R here. So outside, the particles just move out in a way that you can compute classically without any difficulty. But the inborn particles move in like this forever, and the outborn particles move out like this forever. And I'm talking about the region very close to the horizon, which is that the signal parameter is very small. Then, uh, then you have r is very nearly equal to 2m small and negative value. So then R is very close to M. Uh, but now you see if you count states, you think of these particles as quantum particles. <coughs> so they come in as waves. There are waves going in and waves going out. In ordinary physics, there will be a boundary condition here. So waves reflect back. Well, these waves don't reflect back. They just continue in forever. And they go out forever. That means there's an infinite number of space here. So how do we do that? Well, to do that, we are going to use coordinates of black hole. And now maybe I should use a little bit of mathematics here and I'll... Um, come back later. Um, And that is that um, the, I write down the black hole method for a moment. The omega squared is the angular part of the method to say that points on the sphere are connected <coughs> as points on the sphere I. This is a important component of the method. The I depends is what matters this is a technical term. This tells you that time does not proceed from I is equal to M. The coefficient of the D of the D squared vanishes. If I will be less than to M, this thing switches sign and this thing switches sign. So T and R interchange their roles in physics. R becomes like a time of or T becomes like a space of But so then uh, it was discovered that you can better write replace R and T by two coordinates of X and Y, and they are called the Kruskal Kruskal spheres coordinates, and they are defined as following as follows X times Y is R over 2M minus 1. E to the power R over 2M and X divided by Y is E to the power T over 2M. And by multiplying the two, we get the definition of X. By dividing the two, we get the definition of Y. 
And by inverting these two equations, you get r out of x and y and t out of x and y. So this is a coordinate transformation. This is very useful. I'm not affecting the coordinates theta and phi, which are the angular coordinates. I leave those the same as what they were. And um, these x and y are very much like sigma plus or minus t in this notation. So um, near the horizon they are practically the same. So what you then get is that you Again, ignoring the transverse coordinates, what you do is write x and y as time as time as, as, as light home coordinates. So x times x times y is coordinate. These are the r equals constant lines. And t equals constant lines are like this. So this is t equals constant. And um, the x and y equals constant lines are just the diagonal lines like this. The nice thing about these coordinates is that if you look at the metric, and that's a straightforward calculation, if you substitute these coordinates, is that the s squared is 16 m squared over e times dx dy plus o, sorry, 32 m squared over r, e to the right r of the n, dx dy plus r squared. So the <laughs> transverse part remains the same, but replacing t and r by x and y, then gives you this. And the nice thing about this expression is that this quantity in front <laughs> just goes to a constant at the horizon. It doesn't go to zero or to infinity, whereas these go to zero or to infinity, but there just remains a constant. That's why these parameters were chosen. So they were chosen in order to give this effect that the method looks like dx dy plus the transverse coordinates. <coughs> dx dy means that x, it's like dx plus y squared minus <coughs> dx minus y squared. And that's just the ordinary Minkowski metric. So x plus y is a space-like <coughs> order, x minus y is a time-like order. X and Y themselves are like <coughs> home coordinates. That's why you have the X times DY in the method. And um, in terms of these like home coordinates, now you see here go the inverting particles, here go the outgoing particles. And uh, uh, in terms of these particles, I now want to understand what is what the radiation. How the radiation tells you that things can go in. But there are mysterious particles coming out like this. Where do they come from? They come from this region here. What is that? Well, that's a totally irregular region of space time. When you have a black hole formed by matter, there's nothing here. There is no source of particles, the particles coming out. So, where do these particles come from? They come from vacuum fluctuations. And more precisely, they come from the Singular coordinate transformation that you're performing. The involved coordinate transformations that link <coughs> these funny parabolic or hyperbolic uh, coordinates in this corner of the universe and that transform them into coordinates that look like the x and y coordinates in flat space time. That is a singular coordinate transformation. So it's an interesting all that coordinate transformation, but single one. Having a single coordinate translation means that what looks like quantum fluctuations from one observer looks <coughs> like real particles from the other observer. And that's the source of what variation. That's a difficult quantum source. 
And the big problem is, how can we understand that in all the physical terms? Well, we would say that Hawking gave a valid derivation, so he understood what he was doing. So these are just fluctuating particles. But the fluctuation particle from singularities and more transformations. And actually, I think Einstein had not anticipated that they make a general Coriolan transformation. There could be singularities in the transformation world. When you combine it with quantum mechanics, you generate strange quantum infinities. These strange quantum infinities are the origin of the fact that Hawking particles come out, where classically you wouldn't have expected anything to come out. And the question is not only why does Hawking particles come out, but how come that they only represent a finite number of states? And that's the difficulty. Finite number of states doesn't come out of this argument. There's something also completely wrong with our understanding. That's the paradox. And I was hoping I could discuss the paradox more completely today, but I'm going a bit slowly. Tomorrow I'll go a bit faster and uh, derive to you how the paradox can be understood, at least in principle. Although this is a more advanced calculation than this one, I can understand that there are states here. I cannot understand why the number of the states are finite. So to get the number finite requires more advanced physics. And I don't know how far I'll get tomorrow, but I'll try to explain the importance of this advanced physics that tells you where these states come from and how these states can have their repercussion, so to speak, on the standard model. That's the real thing I'm after. I'm not, I not only want to understand how black holes behave, I want to understand how everything behaves, in particular, why the standard model is the way it is. So, the play that it has to do with this very strange paradoxical situation <coughs> in the name of black holes. That's it for today.
and we meet tomorrow at 10.30 or even slightly before if you want to go to the coffee.